This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. This is the fourth and final lecture on interest rate futures, uh, which was chapter 20 of the paper P4 notes. And in the last lecture, we looked at example four on page 119, uh, and I hope you worked through it with me. But we'd done part A, um, and we ended up, without repeating obviously the whole thing and our futures deal and everything, but we end up showing that on the 1st of January, um, she'd end up paying a net 1.466 million. And I asked you to have a go at parts B and C. And let's check here. Part B asks for the hedging efficiency. And the hedging efficiency, it's exactly the same um, formula, workings, as it was for currency options. Uh, we take the profit on one deal and express it as a percentage of the loss on the other deal. And so here it was the futures that made the profit, the 534,000. The place we lost out was on the loan interest. Uh, you see, we ended up paying 2 million interest. At current rates, she'd only have paid 1.4 million. And so we'd have to pay an extra 600,000. And therefore, the hedging efficiency. We already knew it wasn't a perfect hedge, but the efficiency is 89%. Now, as I said, in fact, with um, foreign exchange futures, um, although hedging efficiency has been asked, these days it is rather unlikely, but it's easy enough, so I hope no problem. A little bit more important, though, is C the effective interest rate. Whereas you'll see, the answer to arithmetic is very easy, but there's a rather important point that comes out of this. The effective interest rate, Barbara's ended up paying in total 1.466 million. That's what it's ended up costing her one way or another. And so for the interest rate, we say, okay, she's paid 1.466 million on a loan of 40 million. Well, there's the interest she'd be paying, but that's over a six-month loan, remember. And so to turn it into an annual rate, which would be what would be required, uh, multiply by 12 over 6. <clears throat> And the yearly rate comes to 7.33%. Now, if that was all you were asked for, fine, that we finished. <clears throat> There's no need to say more. But what's rather interesting is that we could have actually predicted that 7.33% on the 1st of January. I beg your pardon, on the 1st of November. You see, on the 1st of November, we had no idea what the interest rate would end up being in January. No idea at all. But we could have predicted, even on the 1st of November, what effectively it should end up paying. And just watch this. Go back to the 1st of November. Imagine we'd no idea what happened in January. You know, this example said assume LIBOR had gone up to 9%. LIBOR could have gone up to 20%. It could have gone down to 4%. On the 1st of November, we had no idea. But we did know the current LIBOR. <clears throat> uh, we knew LIBOR was 6%. We also knew that Barbara would have to pay a premium question tells us she pays an extra 1%.
So on the 1st of November, 7%. We're going to use futures to hedge against the risk. But we knew, did we not, that we wouldn't end up with a perfect hedge. Contracts, no problem. Uh, contract size worked exactly, so that didn't uh, upset us. But why were we not going to get a perfect hedge and therefore fix it at the total so far of 7%? It's because we know, don't do we not, that um, <coughs> the movement in futures prices will not be the same as the movement in the interest rate. We know that. But we could predict the difference from the very beginning. Just let me repeat a little bit of that table we did in the previous lecture. On the 1st of November, what was the futures price? The futures price was, they were January futures, remember, and the futures price was 93.5. On the 1st of November, what's LIBOR? It's 6%, or the equivalent is 94 The difference, the basis risk, 0.5. We know we're going to take the loan on the 1st of January. And although, in real life, of course, you've no idea what LIBOR is going to be on the 1st of January. No idea. We do know, or we assume, that the difference will fall linearly to zero over the life of the future. We'd worked it out earlier. But if it does fall linearly, then whatever the interest rate turns out to be in January, since at the moment there's three months to go, and on 1st of January one month, did we not know that the um, difference on the 1st of January would have dropped to a third of 0.5, or 0.17. Now think about this for the minute. 1st of January, LIBOR could be anything. It could be 5%, it could be 10%, it could be anything. But whatever LIBOR is, the futures price will be different by 0.17. At the moment, the difference is 0.5. If they both moved by exactly the same amount, the difference would stay at 0.5. But the difference is only going to be 0.17. That must mean that they're moving by different amounts. You know, if that moved by 2 to 92, Futures would move, but since the difference is only 0.17, this would move to what? 91.83. The change will be different. And how much different will it be? 0.5 minus 0.17. 0.33. Now we know that's going to happen. You look back uh, in the previous lecture. Uh, at our assumption, assuming LIBOR had gone to 9, you'll find the movement that between uh, the interest rates and the movement between futures, the movement's different by 0.33. And it will be whatever happens to LIBOR. And we know that from the very beginning. The change in the basis risk point three three. As a result, we know from the very beginning she'll be paying 7.33%. Now, it's not something to lose sleep over, <clears throat> but it is worth thinking about. Uh, if you're tall and sure, and there's, you're not wasting time doing this, do the same example we just did. Repeat example four. It won't actually take you many minutes, but repeat example four, assuming that LIBOR on the 1st of January 
is something different. You know, we've just done it LIBOR 9%. Try it with LIBOR 10%. Anything you want. And you'll find, if you repeat the workings, you'll find, in fact, whatever happens to LIBOR, she ends up paying an effective 7.33. We could have predicted that from the very beginning. My brand is it might not be because um, the one problem is we've assumed the difference falls linearly. There's no reason in real life why it should. The difference will fall though. But um, that is in fact rather neat. Anyway, we'll leave futures there. Make sure you're happy, happy with them. Uh, because the last big one we've got to do, uh, not in this lecture, the next one, is interest rate options. But these are strange because there are options to deal in futures. And so you've got to be 100% happy with futures to be able to make sense of options.